I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Vinny G Markets channel brought to you by Vinny G Money. Now, I know I've been MIA for a little bit. It's been about two months since our last video. And you could even ask Bob Wiley. These markets have been doing nothing but taking a dump. But if you've been following our indicators, you should have seen this coming. But let's first take a look at the actual market performance. It's been about two months since our last video. So the S&P 500 for the last two months has been down almost 10 percent year to date it is down about 25 percent the dow jones from two months also down about 10 percent year to date dow jones down about 21 percent and then we have the nasdaq the last two months also down about 10 percent year to date nasdaq down 33 percent so I'm going to try to keep this video short, sweet, and simple because everything is told through our indicators and the scenarios we go over in our last video when it comes to our indicators have actually been playing out. So again, this should be a shock to nobody that the markets have been taking a hit, but let's get right into it. Our first indicator is the U.S. 10-year treasury. From our last video, we left off at about 2.8% and it dropped to a low on August 1st to around 2.6%. And until we get to the current level, Level, let's take a look at what happened to the stock market in our last video we specifically said as long as these rates stay suppressed we specifically said under three percent what was going to happen to the stock market it was going to go up there was going to be room to breathe there was going to be a relief rally and that's exactly what happened so on july 25th the s p 500 was around 4,000. it went up all the way to 4300 by the time mid-august came around and all this time the u.s 10-year treasury was under three percent which we knew it had no business being under now as to why those rates were so suppressed we go over that all in depth in our last video but the reason why the rates shot back up again is because the federal reserve is telling you they're here to fight inflation by raising the interest rates even though that's not going to work when it comes to the essential items such as gas energy and food and we have our guy again bob wiley looking in the right spot we have the jackson hole meeting this took place in august we have powell fed inflation fight could bring pain job losses federal reserve chair jerome powell delivered a stock warning friday about the fed's determination to fight inflation with more sharp rate hikes it will likely cause pain for americans in the form of a weaker economy and job losses and based off this article you could see that made the dow jones drop a thousand points in one day and then in september we had the cpi report consumer price index where we show that inflation rose 0.1 percent in August even with sharp drop in gas prices which we'll get to later but the CPI index increased 0.1% in August excluding food and energy the inflation gauge rose 0.6% both higher than expected costs were driven by wear increases in food shelter Medicare services offsetting a sharp decline in gasoline prices which again we'll get to later but these are things that raising interest rates they're not going to affect anyway in dropping that's why inflation is not going nowhere and we'll get into it more they were still going to still see supply chain issues and another reason why the fed is going to continue to raise interest rates is because they're trying to slow down the labor market you could go to our federal reserve warning shot video where we go over this again more in depth but we have a recent article jobless claims hit five month low despite fed's efforts to slow labor market so the labor market is still too hot right now and also over here a separate report showed inflation running hotter than previously reported in the second quarter so are people still being able to find employment way too easily and inflation continue to rise this is going to cause the fed to continue to raise the interest rates which is what are going to continue to hit the stock market going forward so if you've been following the vinnie g markets channel none of this should be a surprise to you when we were at that low in the u.s 10-year treasury on august 1st at 2.6 percent it rising above over three percent should be no shock due to all this news but it didn't just rise to over three percent we almost hit four percent just a few days ago and why are the rates going up it's because there's no buyers for the u.s 10-year treasury if we take a look at the federal reserve's balance sheet for the past six months it's actually been going down and i think it's starting to settle in with people at the federal reserve they're not playing they're gonna raise interest rates they're gonna roll off this balance sheet where even on this channel we thought it wasn't gonna be the case but this is months ago once we saw that u.s 10-year treasury hit 3.5 percent even though it dropped later we knew that 
that was our warning sign that things were going to be different going forward. So we're currently sitting at a little bit relief on that US 10 year treasury. It did come down a little bit, but it's not due to anything good. It's because the Bank of England, things are so bad in Europe right now. Bank of England had to go back into quantitative ease and just to avoid total crisis. Look at some of these headlines. Bank of England goes into full crisis management mode. Pension fund panic led to Bank of England's emergency intervention. Bank of England bonds rescue has two ugly implications more inflation and an even weaker pound bank of england to buy 65 billion pounds of uk bonds to stem route so the reason why this is bringing temporary relief to the u.s 10-year treasury is because the bank of england it's a central bank just like the federal reserve so if they see the bank of england going into quantitative easing to avert a whole bond crisis they think the federal reserve will follow suit but the issue with all this is quantitative easing and suppressed interest rates it's the same like a drug this all started in 2008 when we gave ourselves injections to get us out of the great recession and this easy money policy and suppressed interest rates lasted up until 2019 where the federal reserve they tried weaning us off this drug with something called autopilot we went over this in our past videos where they were going to raise interest rates going forward but the economy and stock market started tanking right away so they reverted back to lowering interest rates and then 2020 hit and what we do we printed 20 percent of our money supply within in the past two years and kept interest rates at zero so unlike 2008 where we gave ourselves one injection of this drug this is like giving us three four five injections of this drug now that we're going to need more injections going forward that's what the bank of england is doing what do we do when we start getting past the four or five injections we od we die it's over it doesn't help anymore but just to reiterate everything all you have to do is file this u.s 10-year treasury so in our last video on july 25th we spoke about the raids being suppressed due to the ecb unlimited bond buying programs that there would be temporary relief in the stock market which is what we've seen from july 25th to about august 22nd august 22nd that's when we've seen the u.s 10-year treasury crack three percent again which is the exact rate we stated in our last video where you could see the stock market take a free for all from there and everybody knows our second indicator the u.s dollar index the mainstream media they now want to look into this because course it's becoming a problem but we've been going over the US dollar index since our first video we've known to keep an eye on this and we've been seeing it doing nothing but skyrocket so this was another indicator that the stock market was going to take a tumble and we could take a look at some of these headlines we have the dollar is up against every single major currency today and over here we have a chart of all these currencies going down we have other charts we can pull up all the charts we want all these currencies against the US dollar they're plummeting and it's becoming a problem we have this Barron's article, strong US dollar, unstoppable force endangering other currencies. And now we have China tell state banks to prepare for a massive dollar dump and yuan buying spree as Beijing prior interventions have failed to stem its currencies. Worst year since 1994. So China is going to start dumping the US dollar and buying their own yuan. And this is what's going on. Now, forget the stock market for one second. A strong US dollar is going to make it very difficult for the United States to engage in global trade and everything is becoming global so other countries they're going to start looking into different currencies to conduct trade going around the u.s dollar because the u.s dollar is just too strong for them and that's where you're going to have central bank digital currencies step in it's why china's light years ahead of us when it comes to the digital yuan and central bank digital currencies this global currency crisis it's all about resetting the system getting us off the physical dollars and moving us into the central bank digital currencies that's all this is about it's a total reset Set, and that's what you see going on people in the united states they can't even take advantage of a strong u.s dollar because they have no savings we go over this in prior videos their savings are drained they're more in depth than actually have savings so it doesn't benefit anybody but looking at all this just from an investment standpoint go back to our pilot video what was our formula a high u.s 10-year treasury combined with a high u.s dollar index equals disaster for the stock market with that u.s dollar index we were first blaming it on the russia ukraine situation talking about global turmoil people turning to the u.s dollar which still might be the case but at some point when that kept rising you could go back to our prior videos we said this is a problem it's just rising way too fast we caught it in time we knew to adjust most people didn't that's why you have articles like this stock market losses wipe out nine trillion from americans wealth americans holdings of corporate equities and mutual fund shares fell to 33 trillion at the end of the second quarter down from 42 trillion 
at the start of the year. You also have articles like this. Despite recession fears, most 401k investors haven't changed their portfolios. Here's what some advisors suggest. Only 5% of 401k, 403b investors shifted their asset allocations during the second quarter of 2022, according to a Fidelity investment report. And I understand, just like this article says, people just want to set it and forget it. But on the Vinny G Markets channel, we're not trying to get slaughtered out here. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. We know cash preservation. That's the key right now. Cash is going to be king. It's going to have one last run before it gets wiped out and we move to central bank digital currencies. So we're trying to make the right adjustments on this channel. And you should know this if you've been following. And when it comes to our exposure in the market, because again, you do still want some exposure, but we haven't diverted. We've been staying in energy and you could look from a three month to year out outlook. Energy has been the top performer no matter how you want to look at it. It has taken its lumps, hits here and there, but it has been the top performer from a three month standpoint. And also our food ETFs, again, they've been taking hits since we started speaking about them. But if you go even three months out, you're starting to see they're actually starting to recover. So we're not diverting. Again, no one knows where this market is going, but I still like where we're at. Energy, these food ETFs, and again, yes, crude oil, which is our third indicator. And just before we get into that, just bringing all the three indicators back into place, what we say for a bull market? We needed a lower U.S. 10-year treasury, a lower U.S. dollar index, and we needed crude oil to go higher. And that's what was going on when we first started these videos, which is why we were reaching higher highs. All that reverted. Again, that should have shown us I had the indicators for you to tell you that this market was about to hit a bear market. A higher U.S. 10-year treasury, a higher US dollar index and crude oil has been taking a beating. It is below $80 a barrel. We're just going to touch on it real quick. So the mainstream media continues to put the demand destruction narrative out there that because we're raising interest rates, it's going to lead us into a recession and there's going to be less demand for crude oil. But we see this Bloomberg article, Americans are consuming more oil, even if they're not driving as much. And on top of it, the United States, they're still tapping those strategic oil reserves. This article is just from a few days ago the New York Times even as oil prices ease the United States keeps tapping strategic reserves the administration move has brought down gasoline prices some experts say continued withdrawals could test the nation's energy security and now we have Saudi Arabia they're lowering oil prices for Asia and Europe but it's hiking them for most US buyers Saudi Arabia is reducing the prices by four dollars a barrel for Asian refineries and two dollars for European customers the state-run giant is raising prices by 50 cents for most U.S. buyers. And we now have OPEC decreasing their oil production by 100,000 barrels per day as prices fall. And they're in discussions to decrease it even more going forward. So with the current and possibly continued production cuts, along with the United States, you would think they would have to stop tapping these strategic oil reserves at one point. Could be after the midterm elections. We'll see. So all that combined the reasons why I'm still bullish on crude oil and just energy in general. This doesn't hurt. Warren Buffett Berkshire Hathaway bought another 5.99 million shares of Occidental Petroleum Corp, boosting its stake to 20.9% after the oil company shares lost about a fifth of their value in less than a month. Warren Buffett, he knows this energy crisis. It's only going to get worse. It's not going nowhere. So the backing of Warren Buffett in energy, to me, is a good sign that we're still in it. But for the overall market in general, there was a little bit relief in the U.S. 10-year Treasury and U.S. dollar index. They did dip a little bit. If the bulls can't take over off that relief and push the stock market a little bit higher and the stock market falls with that relief, we could be looking at a very sharp drop. I think we can see a little bit of a relief rally going forward, but I don't see any good catalyst to push this market that much higher. I think we continue to go down from here. That U.S. 10-year treasury and U.S. dollar index, they're both going to continue to rise again, in my opinion, going forward. But just like the title of this video, the indicators are going to tell you everything, so you you're just going to have to monitor those going forward. We'll try to put out new videos. If you want to see some of our short-term moves, we have the Instagram actually set up. Instagram is Vinny G Markets. We got those pink sheets flying. You can see some of our credit spread plays that we're putting out there. Again, we only paper trading. If you follow these trades, you're definitely going to lose money. But you could tune in there to see some of our short-term moves. Because you know right here on the Vinny G Markets channel, we stay making money even in a drought. So if you like what you hear... Come mess with your boy, Hulk smash that like button. And as always, I'll leave you off with this. The God of the Bible, the God of Abraham. 
the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is real, and may he bless you. We feel we are not yet prepared sufficiently for this fourth industrial revolution. And the danger is, you know all this word of creative destruction. I'm convinced that we will destroy, unfortunately, a lot of employment. Uh, just think of uh, self-guided cars uh, um, and all the drivers losing their jobs. Let's look at the bank employees and so on. 